need the best designs in your fleet of vehicles, there's only one brand name that many trust in. One that makes every car pop out from the rest of the field, and that is Lightning Wraps. Be sure to check us out on Facebook at Lightning Wraps to get yourself a vehicle unlike the rest. Lightning Wraps, the most affordable designs made at your leisure. Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. For a new PC or an upgrade to your current one? Look no further than Ford Entertainment Group, your home for the best quality and value in new, pre-built, and custom PCs at the lowest price guaranteed. We have affordable PC solutions for any budget, with custom builds starting at $595. Even the pros turn to Ford Entertainment Group to get them up and running. With valued customers from all over the world, it's easy to see why Ford Entertainment Group is the most trusted brand in custom PCs. I wanted to save my awesome subscribers the most money when they started their sim racing journey. Well, I searched high and low for the best deals. And I'm so proud that Jeffrey and I have partnered up so I can spread the good news about where to get the lowest price on a high-quality computer. Feel confident when buying from us with the FEG Satisfaction Guarantee. Get yourself on track today by visiting us online at FEGPC.net. coverage today for Pedal Mill Racing League's Lightning Rouse 100 at Iowa Speedway is brought to you in part by our friends and sponsors of Season 8 of Pedal Mill Racing League Truck Series. Thank you for your support. And now, fans and all alike, enjoy the show. Enjoy the show indeed here, race fans. Welcome to Iowa Speedway here in Newton, Iowa. And it's time to bear witness 22 of the best in Pedal Mill Racing League going at it once again in a high-octane, high-level playing field. Iowa Speedway is the next run on the show. Hi, everyone. I am the Crusader. Chris Shaw joining you guys here today here as we get our field of drivers ready to rack and stack them up here onto the field. A who's who of drivers right now trying to get their first win of the season while also trying to find the way around the track and beat out the best on the butt of the best here. Should be an interesting layout and an interesting race here for many of these guys, which in turn makes it that much more interesting to go around on the track. But without further ado, here it is time to see your starting lineup in gridding order for your Lightning Rouse 100. Presented in part 
by Florida Entertainment Group PC.net. Your grading order tonight is going to start with the number 97 of Chris Bass. It is outside in the one is Bobby Anderson. Run number two will be the seven of Jeffrey Vickery. It is outside in the 20. That will be Mr. Jeff Oaks. Run number three is going to be Wally Babb in the 99. It's outside in the 87. It will be Kevin Baker. Run number four is Robert Kahn. The 21 is outside. And then that big three, it's going to be Jason Henry. Row 5 is Tyler Ork, and the 8 is outside in the 28, Robert Hissong. Row number 6 is Jordan Darnell, and the 15 is outside, piloting the 84, Matthew Hoffert. Row number 7, that will be piloted down by Hunter Hansen, and the 13 is outside in the big 7-6, Mike Rideout. Row 8, the throttle, Chantel Bottle, and the 5 are outside the 27, Corey Reed. Row number 9 is Trent Henson, the 88 is outside, it is the 66, a Corey Stahl. Row 10 is Dennis Warrens, and the 90 it is outside is the 12, a Shane Ledoux. And final starter in the field in the number 98, Sean Long, with the 18 of Clinton Seymour. Race fans, here it is. Here we go. 22 of the best about to throw it down. field will embark here out on the track here get themselves a lap around they will get two laps to kind of get settled in get it kind of scored off on the track make sure they are ready for the action ahead a freight laner front rotor of drivers ready to do it out here and get their work and get to business end here scrolling by some of these guys man a lot of them are already hamped they're ready to go they're ready to fire them off down to the distance looking like a absolute solid field and a half here should be an interesting one we saw last week too chris bass here put it up into victory lane here in texmore speedway on one of the ruliest tracks you'd see there for the mile and a half but nevertheless those that stuck around now have a chance to try to knock him off that totem pole and that's going to be a very tall order in turn because he knows what he's going to have to do. Back him off down the back straightaway here, race fans. We'll send him into three and four. Pace car will exit off of exit of four. And then we let them rip and let them loose here. It is time for some short track race in action. The trucks are ready. The field is set. Now it's time to find ourselves a winner. Off our corner number four, the Lightning Raps 100 begins. To the roar of the engines, they are away. Drivers taking it easy for the start here. So it looks like Tyler Ork in the eight making a big run there. Coming off through corner number three and four. A little bit of a bobble off as Jeffrey Oaks. A little bit of problems down there. Major trouble. Skins him out. Crashes a huge wreck ensues. And a huge pile up as the eight of Tyler Ork comes straight down around. Matthew Hoffert wrecking hard there off a of corner number four on the front stretch here. Oh, my. And I don't know if Tyler Work is already down and out, but that was a huge wreck there, to say the least. Presented by the Bucket Company, here is your PTMS and replay. Ooh. Got right in there with a 99 of Wally Bab with uh, 20 of Jeffrey Oaks, and you can see everyone else just taking a huge hit and a lick around there. Trying to evade traffic. Kind of hard to really call that one from that view, but there is a way to get around that. It's time to take a look at our chopper cam. I don't know, folks. That's a hard one to call. That's a little too close for me to call on. See, it looked like both drivers kind of had their own fair shake of an incident there. So those that evaded traffic and avoided trouble will at least have a chance to kind of fight back in. But not the start anybody was looking for, much less these drivers.
so not the start these drivers were looking for out of the gate. Of course, lap number 35, I believe, will be with the stage break comes, or lap 40 in this case, whichever one comes first. We'll make things a little bit more interesting here for these drivers as they'll have to now figure out how to get out of this mess and get out of the troublesome spot they put themselves in. Tyler Oreck, I think, is all but done. The 8 is no longer coming back out on the track. I think he is done for the night. And that is a tough shame there for him, unfortunately. He just came out here and threw a one roller right off and then got sent packing out of here. Corey Reed, the 27, you see, damaged up badly. Kevin Baker, he's also damaged up pretty bad. We'll talk with the drivers throughout the race here, maybe a little bit later on, but right at the moment here, things definitely having to pick up and really get settled down the pace car lights will turn off on the speedway here we'll get them all settled up again lap five of a hundred we now go to lap six of a hundred again a hundred laps to the distance also race fans if you did not hear the news and the word already by mouth or by us we will be broadcasting Shake and Bake Racing League live tonight as well. We are still got coverage to go for that here, so be sure to see what happens and what goes down on the track here with the Shake and Bake Cup Series. Next Gen back in action. We'll catch them out in just a little while as we right now continue to find out what happens next here on the Speedway side of things here in Iowa. Caution lights are off down on the car. Pace car has now reeled us back in, and we are set to go back to the racing. Now, can we keep it green and keep it clean? About to find out. Here we go. No time wasted there. Everybody backing off their corners and watching themselves big time here. They know what they just did. They know they can't be playing that game no more. Well, we got through one clean lap. Pretty good battle and back and forth here. Chris Pass continues to lead him off. Jeffrey Vickery currently also holding the charge down and holding the field at bay. Jordan Darnell on the number 15, keeping it right up pace, keeping it right up the track here, trying to catch up in the field. The Rattlesnake, Robert Kahn, Jeffrey Vickery also trying to do much of the same as traffic right now. Burrows and bunches these guys ahead and gals too. Don't forget about that five of Chantel Pato or the 07 of Cindy Taylor which unfortunately for Cindy tonight, she has not been able to make it here, neither has Pete Taylor. Sadly, they live in the Florida-based area there and they are without internet and power. So our thoughts and prayers down there to everyone that was affected by Hurricane Ian this, this week alone. So thank you so much for them for coming on board and hopefully we hope to see them back on the track soon enough. This is race number three of their season here. Chris Bass already backing off a little bit in the 97. Looks like he's trying to preserve the tires just a little bit. Watch these guys in the corners. Everybody mounting charges and mounting some runs though. See the 50 of George Darnell also kind of starting to make a little bit of a gap in between. Oh no, it's trouble down there though. We got one crashed out. Yellow is out. Well, we had, well, I thought we had a crash out, but uh, apparently we did not. I am not sure what went wrong there. Let's take a look at the PT Minister replay. Let's see if we get a good look. Oh, well, <laughs> well, that might explain a lot. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, though. Corey Stahl made an impressive save there, but... Uh, I don't know if Kevin Baker was exactly expecting to give him the old punt there in the corner. That definitely did not settle well. But you're on board with Baker. You're going to look at it. Backed off when he was supposed to and stayed out of the throttle, but uh, that didn't quite go according to plan at the same time. Hold on, 
folks. We got some technical difficulties to work out. And it looks like we're going to just have to work what we got there. Well, right now the field currently going to stretch back out, so it's time to listen in to some of these guys here on the call now and on the list here in the big pink and white machine. You might know his name. Trent Henson joins us on board. Trent, how you doing tonight, buddy? Trent, you got a copy down there? What's going on, man? Uh, going pretty good. How about you today? It's going good. Well, been a while since we've heard from you, and usually more known for your dirt racing. Uh, what's going on with you in the truck series on asphalt? You decided to just do a little bit of a shift around? That's right. Trying something new. <laughs> Not a bad idea, then. So, what's uh, what was kind of one of your biggest things you wanted to try to get dialed in or figured out when you joined into the league and all that as well? Main thing is how to drive them. You know, getting in, getting off, getting loops tight. For sure there. Well, nevertheless, though, Trent, great to have you on board and great to see you back on the show here, sir. Best of luck to you in this one. Yeah, I'm full appreciate it, buddy. Trent Hanson, ladies and gentlemen, on the call there. Time to listen in with one of our other guys here. He pilots the 84. You know the name very well. It is Matthew Hoffer now on the line. What's that? Well, not much there, uh, Hoffy, but nevertheless, you have been kind of feeling a little bit, uh, in that middle pack range right now, you're qualified 12, you're still in 12. I mean, what's going on down there? I got kind of mixed into that first wreck there on the front stretch and uh, had to go on to use the fast repair, uh, the one that we had. So just trying to trying to watch my step and uh, make sure I don't get mixed up in any other madness. Do you think a lot of these guys may have uh, kind of forgotten that they only really have one answer repair and one uh, little leg up to keep up these guys? Um, part of me says no, but oh, part of me says yeah. Uh, I'm leaning towards the part of me that says yeah, they kind of forgot. Um, but uh, we'll see as the race plays out. It's still still early on yet. We're only, what, 14 laps in, so anything can happen. And we'll just uh, focus on the pitch strategy and try to work our way up. For sure there. Best of luck down there, Hoffer. Thank you. The number 84, ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Hoffer on the call. Field is double filing up now. We are looking to go back green. Jeffrey Oaks coming out of pit road. Corey Reed as well trying to get out there. Oaks and Reed will get out on the track. Field is racked, stacked, and ready to go back on the attack. A little different camera angle now. We'll send it down to our bottom cam here and let these guys and gals go back to it. Green fly back on out. The more we stack these drivers up, the more aggression you're going to see from them. Now, granted, there is a stage break as well that will come later that these drivers can use to their advantage. However, the one thing I will say is you don't want to have to get too excessive where you're going to want to have to use it. You're going to want to stay nice and clean, smooth on the ends and smooth on the curves, hoping for the best to later on. And Robert Kahn now, he's already up to no do goodery. Here comes the Freightliner. Going down, Rusty bumps down there in turn number two. Yeah, that's this track was built and developed by Rusty Wallace, so what do they call the bumps? The Rusty bumps. Beautiful facility, beautiful layout, and a course that only really the virtual world has been truly been able to thank and appreciate, unless you're IndyCar. Looking at you here, NASCAR. Coming off down around the back straightaway though, Wally Babbin the 99 Toyota Tundra working his way behind that 13 of Hunter Hansen and the one of Bobby Anderson. Both guys doing a great job holding their lines in. You can see the bottom is usually where most drivers will take two for the speeds and the power, but if you run towards that middle sector, you do tear your tires up a little bit more wear and thin if you're not careful coming off those exits with that rusty bump down that little edge there. It can make things extremely difficult, a lot more hard to master, in turn causing the truck to get a little bit looser and the right front to burn up. And that's what you really don't want here is to have that so sort of a deal, that little problem me is stemming out and coming to you there. Robert his song in the 28 making a bit of a comeback here. Here comes the old Budweiser machine. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm presuming he designed that up to mimic what uh Old Dale Jr. used to drive out there. Just a hunch, just a guess. I'm probably completely wrong, but gotta admit, 
pretty sweet looking ride on his end. The onboard here of Corey Stahl right now, as he continues to work his way through traffic and through the field. Started back in 18th, he's now moved up to the 15th slot, still some work to do and still some room for improvement later on, but he knows he needs to get it going, he needs to get it dialed in now. Press passer, front pole setter in the W Energy number 97, staying behind the field for the moment, but this is exactly what he did at Texas before, just kind of going back and dominating the rest of the race. Jordan Darnell in that field tight 15, trying to do much of the same, kind of staying to his strategy, staying to his run. You'll see a lot of drivers too, what they'll do is they'll try to extend out their truck as long as they can in terms of fuel, tire, and limit. And they try to push themselves to their limits as far as they can, but again, there's only so far you can go with these trucks before they just become a little bit too much for their own good. And I'd say right now, just judging by this group, this season, and this, this, this gang of drivers alone, I think honestly this is probably the most competitive season we have ever seen from Battle of the Metal Racing League. We've seen higher I rating guys come in. We've seen higher safety rating guys. We've seen guys that are world class racing out here but in this league. But uh, to me, this is literally the most proficient and overall just racing mindsetted driving list we have ever been able to see and conform here with Battle of the Metal Racing League. And that is something in my opinion deserves a lot of love from those admins and those officials down there working constantly to try and get this lead to better themselves and get things really dialed up on the track. It's a good showing and a really good surprise to see that everything has now come together and this lead is finally back where it should be in my opinion. Red Bull Racing 66 as well here. Of course, Stahl currently holding the Budweiser 28 and Robert Hiss on back just a little bit. As the 98 of Sean Long slowing down tremendously here. Looks like maybe a slight problem getting to the bottom. And that in turn is causing him to drive up high side. One thing about Iowa Speedway, we talk about it constantly as well. With these short tracks, it's a multi-groove track. You got the bottom, you got the middle. And if you're feeling really hungry, you can go to that outside cushion and really swing it to everybody while they fight on the bottom. Most drivers will not dare go up there. They'll stay towards the middle and the bottom. But I have seen drivers successfully use the outside to their to their embankments and their best pro pro providential here. The 20 of Jeffrey Oaks got into that wreck earlier on there with the 99 of Wally Babb. Since then, Babb has been pretty much ahead of the field. Oaks, he's been behind the pack a little bit. Snap Auto Parts 20 right now trying to make a comeback though and looking to fight his way around. Looking at a great comeback here and a great little fight back in performance. Robert Kahn staying true to his word though and staying close to the heart and close to the chest with his run. But remember, he did the same thing at Texas Motor Speedway last time out. And that got him absolutely nowhere late into the run. Jeffrey Vickery actually staying right there with him, staying right to him. And Bobby Anderson, the one, doing much of the same. Corey Reed though, going to be in the way. He's going to get put a lap down, unfortunately. Too many problems from earlier on and too many issues stemming back to that first wreck in that situation there will slow his momentum down and bring him back to a creeping crawl. John Long in that 98 machine. CW Matthews Ford F-150 going to be put in a little bit through the field. As the 20 of Jeffrey Oaks tries to get around him while also having to deal with Jason Henry in three, blocking the 66 Red Bull racing machine out of it. Gosh, the flag is out. That is going to be our stage break. And so now the stage is set for our final leg of the race here. This will be where we let him loose and let him fire off. Corey Reed will get his lap back. But nevertheless, race fans, this has been a wild, wild little start. But we are just simply getting started here at Iowa Speedway. Who will take home the Lightning Raps 100? Find out when we return. The Lightning Raps 100 at Iowa Speedway has been presented in part by our friends at the Pit Stall. From the Summer Series to the Fall Series, the Pit Stall is now bringing in the top line of drivers. And you can join in the party too. By the Butt Kicker Company, best in performance on feeling real tracks of the virtual world. The Butt Kicker, feel what you've been missing. By Ford Entertainment Group, PC.net, matching your want with your wallet. 
For Entertainment Group, PC.net is looking to get you the best PC for your bank and buck in iRacing. And by Lightning Wraps, the most affordable designs made at your leisure. Lightning Wraps looks to bring out the best designs in your library. When you need the best designs in your fleet of vehicles, there's only one brand name that many trust in. One that makes every car pop out from the rest of the field, and that is Lightning Wraps. Be sure to check us out on Facebook at Lightning Wraps to get yourself a vehicle unlike the rest. Lightning Wraps. The most affordable designs made at your leisure. Huh. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt kicker. The future is feeling. Looking for a new PC or an upgrade to your current one? Look no further than Ford Entertainment Group, your home for the best quality and value in new, pre-built, and custom PCs at the lowest price guaranteed. We have affordable PC solutions for any budget, with custom builds starting at $595. Even the pros turn to Ford Entertainment Group to get them up and running. With valued customers from all over the world, it's easy to see why Ford Entertainment Group is the most trusted brand in custom PCs. I wanted to save my awesome subscribers the most money when they started their sim racing journey. Well, I started time over the best deals. And I'm so proud that Jeffrey and I have partnered up so I can spread the good news about where to get the lowest price on a high-quality computer. Feel confident when buying from us with the FEG Satisfaction Guarantee. Get yourself on track today by visiting us online at FEGPC.net. Welcome back here to the show, race fans. Right now, currently under the caution flag from the stage break end. Stage one has now been put fully into the books, which means the drivers now can prepare up for their final leg of the race here, which is to go full end, full send. Stage break does quite a bit of a number for these guys and gals, and it really ends up evening out the playing field just a little bit for them to have to figure out how to go from here and really how to take control of this race. Now we get to see who has marked down their territory, who has marked down their speeds and got a good run and a chance at this here. As the rest of your field currently work on pit strategy and pit stop still Shane Ledoux getting some fuel and tire sets. Matthew Hopper much the same. Tyler Ork, the only driver out of our 22 field that has not been able to get back onto the track. A violent wreck earlier on costing him dearly and getting him into a very tough little situation. And sadly, will not really look like he's going to come back out with his main laps as he's down here. So hopefully the best for Tyler Ork. You can come back out here next time out and maybe be, maybe get a bit of a show back on his feet, back on his hands here. As we've got some folks coming on board in here, kind of Crawford saying hashtag Team Rattlesnake. The Rattlesnake being Robert Conkamp. Gave him that nickname a long, long time ago. Back when we were out and about on NASCAR Heat. I always used to say that he was kind of a cold-blooded animal. He liked to strike when he felt like and he attacked when he needed to. So I gave him the nickname, the Rattlesnake. So that's uh, that's how that's how we ended up doing it. And now Field will double file up everybody back in position, coming off for turn number three and four. That means only one thing here, race fans. It's time to go, and it's time to bring them back to the pace, back to the line. Green flag high in the air, awaiting the command. The structure is off. We're back at it. We have 75 or 65 laps left to go. Oh, Kevin Baker right now. He's on some burnt up ends and tires right now, and he is going three wide, mixing it up there. Con and Anderson, they clear it out. Well, that can't be good. Baker is on literally 21 lap, 20 lap tires burnt up. 
compared to these guys now that are on fresher tires, that may not have been the wisest move by the 87. I'm not so sure he was planning on it being a good move or a bad move. I think he was just trying to see if maybe he can use it for later. I don't know, though. I don't know if I would have tried to do with this late in the game. It's kind of in that state, that kind of playing field. That's a very warm welcome there. You're on board camera now. The D-Dub button box is number 90 Chevrolet Silverado as Dennis warns. Trying to warn the field, stay out of my way or I'm taking this one from you. He's trying to find an opening, though, to get around Clinton Seymour and Jason Henry as they continue to duke it out a little bit there on the middle and the bottom lane. Huge run there from Seymour as he gets it right to the yellow line, trying to stick with it. Henry also in that mix here. They got troubles right behind him. Problems for the 98. We've got a problem for Sean Long. And the CW Matthews 98 F-150 goes for a little tumble and a spin. I don't think he got clipped by anybody there, but we have to visit the PTM Insta replay to truly know. Here is the here is the camera angle of what happened here, and then we'll take another look at it. Nobody around here. He goes high up. That's the no low. That's no go zone there. You can see he's trying to save it. He's trying to get out of that. No, but that's not going to happen. Loses in the corner and loses in the turn, and unfortunately. Now has to suffer the move to end of line scenario. That was not what he had intended by any means of the imagination. What a tough break there for the 98. One last look at it. There it is to the turn and away she goes. Not a lot you can do from that. And Long knows it too. That's going to really cost him big time here, folks. He can't make mistakes like that and expect this race to go any cleaner. He's going to be in a tough little spot in Ordicament now having to deal with this here. Brent Lowe joining us on the board now. He's saying, good evening, sir. How you been? Uh, Brent, I'm doing all right, man. Just hanging in there. Not really. I'm just minding my P's and Q's and just staying out of trouble, I guess you could say. Also, if you guys are new to the channel, do not be shy. Do not be afraid. I do talk quite a bit, I know, but I am not afraid to chat with you guys and have a little fun, too. It does make the time go by, and I think you guys enjoy it, too. So feel free to comment down below if you wish and you please. We will always have a place in our heart, in our uh, voice, in our minds and hearts for you guys because you have done the same for us. Speaking of that, I think it's time we take a listen in down to some of the drivers here. Listening in now, it is a 13 of Hunter Hansen. Hunter, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing really good. Thanks for asking. How are you? Doing all right, sir. Right now, my friend, you're uh, nine spots up from where you were at. You started in 13th, in the 13th. I mean, that's that probably no coincidence here. I mean, I got to believe you are trying to make sure that the unlucky 13 is now becoming a luckier number 13. Oh, by all means, uh, 13's always been the racing number. Uh, just have to give a big shout out to everybody that hosts us and lets us race here. We really appreciate the opportunity to uh, show out and uh, show what we've got to race with these guys. For sure, there. Now, uh, with the strategy starting to pinpoint down to fuel and tires, we've seen a couple of cautions thro uh, thrown out, unfortunately, due to some drivers getting wrecked or spin. I mean, how, how aggressive do you think some of these guys may get later into this race? Do you think it may get a little out of control? I definitely believe uh, tire wear is going to be a big factor here. Uh, really just trying to follow these guys. Uh, these guys are the fast guys compared to where I qualified. Uh, I'm really just going to try to stay on them uh, and try to stay on their pit schedules and save it for the later in stage in the race and see if I can uh, pull off a win. For sure there. Best of luck down there, Hanson. Yep, thank you. Hunter Hanson, ladies and gentlemen, piling in the number 13 today. And that's really all we have for drivers we can chat with here in this case. And it's a good thing, too, because right now the drivers are getting back to ready to go green. And he's not lying, too. These guys that he's up ahead right now, these are the faster drivers. These are the guys that will put some food on the table and put some, some hair on your chest if you're not careful. Or in the uh, Throttle Chantel Pottles case, uh, put a little girl powder in your face. Okay, that didn't even sound right either. <laughs> I probably should just shut up. All right, here we go, race fans. Down the back straight away here. They are all set to go and ready to field on down. It is time to see who is going to be able to walk away in the halfway marker with that race lead. 
as the field draws near and draws clear it's going to be an interesting sight to be had an interesting little leg up to be sure entering through corner number four this time on by we send them their way and send them off to the plains to the cornfields of iowa we go green Looked like Robert Cobb was trying to see if he can get a little leg up on that seven of victory out of the gate. Didn't quite find it there. Hanson now right on the throttle. Here he comes on the outside, blocking Collins' run. Great corner off, great battle atmosphere right now on display from the drivers. Nobody giving an inch, nobody giving out too quick. Three wide, just barely there. Now full on, uh oh, Bob gets a little tap there from Bass. Chris Bass giving a little nudge that 99 Wally back there. And both guys kind of coincide with one another. Three wide slew for a second there off a of three and four as a 13, Hunter Hanson cuts it right up there. Con and Vickery. And the boys right now trying to stay in line and catch that number one of Bobby Anderson. Now he is your new leader. Yeah, Stewart watching with us, and great to have you on board. Just have Chris Bass brought you into town. Well, I can tell you where he's at right now. He's currently in the seventh spot, but he qualified first, so wouldn't be surprised if the old W Energy 97 starts to build his feet up here, but right now he's going to have to start figuring some things out because he's getting a lot of company his way. And by a lot, I mean pretty much the entire field is right behind him here now. Let's see more in the 18, going right up ahead of their three at Jason Henry. See if he's got some opening there or two to deal with. As the 90 Dennis Warren's also using some of that draft and speed from the 18 camp. And the multi-group action of Iowa Speedway is finally showing itself in the best, most positive way it can. Next week, race fans, we will be having an off week here on the Sunday night portion. But do not fear, we still have Shake and Bake at the Charlotte Roval coming up. But on October 16th, and watch for your DVRs and watch for the cameras when we put up our video, we're going road course racing. If you thought the ovals were tough, you have no idea what you're up for until you face Sonoma. Be sure to tune on in on October 16th as we'll see it go down on the track. It should be an interesting one. Just about halfway done here, and again, you can just see the wear and tear. Some of these drivers are facing a lot of drivers at the moment currently, not only fighting themselves, but also fighting the equipment, fighting the, the machinery they have on display. These, F these trucks are no joke. They weigh a ton. They, they weigh a lot of equipment down. They are heavy to maneuver and heavy to manage. But one thing we always talk about again with these 550 horsepower machines is that they are set for grassroots racing. These are without a doubt short track sta stable bases. This is one of the reasons we always talk about when you watch them go out on these shorter tracks, the racing just becomes so much more entertaining and crazy to say the least. This is a great example of it right now. Bab of the 99 trying to hold that big five of Chantel the throttle bottle off, but the throttle does not care for anything or anyone. She is going to try to take the season in her grasp and in her hands. Remember, she had a great start to the season winning at Talladega. She'd love to take another win home. And on her Iowa Speedway, this is one of her best tracks from Heat to iRacing. So we'll see if she can continue that, that pressure and that momentum as currently we've got a battle for the race lead. Anderson versus Khan. It's a battle between old versus new. The old guard of Khan versus the new stance of Anderson. And Khan showing why he's a veteran here to the Power Rangers number one. Not giving him an inch here. Tremendous back and forth as Vickery watches on from behind. He sees his opportunity, he seizes his chance here, but I think he's working more towards with Anderson flying here than Collins, trying to keep the rattlesnake from getting too ahead of himself and too crazy right now. And that's a brilliant strategy if you ask me. Stay focused on the driver you know that is gonna be able to use for momentum later. Keep him towards the outside and make sure that bottom does not get a run because once Collins gets up there, it could be anybody's guess what he does next. And it looks like he may be listening to that strategy. The track seems to be migrating. He's seeing a little bit more movement to the outside. Nobody really going towards the bottom yet. 
As the track lay down enough rubber though in the middle to keep from getting too loose or getting too aggressive here. When that bottom goes, then it becomes more of a slide job maneuver you have to aim for. And this is what we're talking about. Here comes Khan to the, out, the inside looking for the bottom. Can he hit the slide job through the rusty bumps? He's got a run coming for the crossover. No go there. He's got it lined up here. He's going to go for it. Can he get it up? Oh, it's just not enough to allow by the corner of one of Anderson gets into the wall. And Khan will get the lead. Anderson making a bit glaring mental error there. Slams the wall off a turn four. Did not see where he was going and makes the big mistake. Rest up your field now. Moving their way to the chain. A hellacious maneuvering of battles from the field. Everybody making a good stand of it. Except for right up at it. Turn number four. Can they save it? Oh, it's close. Warren's will save it but will the caution fly no caution there warns is okay he'll continue oh my word what a hit there off a of turn number four there it looked like warns got kind of caught off guard let's take a look at it from the pt mr replay presented by the butt kicker company warns went down for some real estate the 15 went up for some real estate a meeting of the minds did not quite go according to plan. Jordan Darnell catches the 90 of Warrens. But here's the thing about Warrens. He was able to recover, not get the caution out, and manages to at least keep it green. Good on him and good show of respect. Hard racing indeed here as we are continuing to fight this one out. We are still not done yet. <laughs> and we're just getting, this is getting crazier and crazier as we go too. This is one thing we love about this race. We have got about 40 laps remaining now. And time is of the essence. Victory trying to get to Khan and trying to stabilize him up. May have to rely on a pit strategy though. Corey Stahl looking to get below the three of Henry. Henry gets under the wall protection. One thing we're noticing too, turn four right now. It looks like it might be starting to stick up about there. It looks like they're getting tighter and they're getting a lot harder in the throttle. And I think because that right front is burning up so quick, that's what's affecting him so badly. You can see a lot of them trying to pace their way and trying to stay out of trouble. But you can only go so far with that, and you can only push your limit as much as you want. No pun intended to push limits recently. Reconstruction number 27, Corey Reed. Remember when a lap down and the end of stage break and now pretty much getting all he's worth here for what it's worth he has visited victory lane before and he's trying to do it again making a great little fight off here and a good battle off with everyone in the field over 20 drivers have continued to run in every single week week in and week out from week one to week three but at sonoma will they all come together and race there at the same token at the same time that's going to be something these guys are going to have to figure out because that's going to be a very tall order on a road course, no less, to have to figure out and also master at the same time. So on board here, Corey Stahl, and I was actually practicing Iowa Speedway before I got onto the show today because I wanted to get my Ferrari out and I wanted to get my truck out. Believe me, the Ferrari it's a lot more it's a lot more crazy than uh, you think with a truck than a truck. But that's uh, that's beyond the point. But nevertheless, driving the truck here, the F-150. To me, the biggest thing that I noticed was it took about 10 laps before you really got more grip and you got a little bit more stick. But if you overpowered this track out of the gate instead of trying to run the corner smooth as silk, you paid the price and you paid it big time because this place was not going to be too kind to you. The right front burns up so much that the rear the rear end just would not kick out anymore and it pretty much just turned into well how far can I dart this thing into the wall in an, in an awkward angle. It's a challenging course and it's a challenging track and that is one of the best reasons we always say this is one of the driver's tracks. This is one of if not maybe the toughest tracks they face.
Bobby Anderson, the one right now, staying in control, at least for the moment. But here comes that 97, Chris Bath. Look at this great runoff here from the 97. He is starting to pinch point accuracy, accurately and power, power this thing up. But has he gone too far into the abyss of the black well of these drivers? He may not have enough time to catch back up there to the Rattlesnake or Jeffrey Vickery. Well, he certainly thinks he can, though. He's going to try to rely on a pit strategy, it looks like, and that's going to be his pinpoint move. He laid back so long and so well. Honestly, I'm surprised he did this. Other drivers going into pit row. The three of Jason Henry goes in. Jordan Darnell, the damage on that right side of the truck. Remember, he got into it with Dennis Warrens earlier. Warrens still trying to find his way back around the field and back into position to possibly making it run for it here. Everybody's playing field, everybody's game plan is being thrown into good use. The number 12 is Shane Ledoux here. Looked like he might be coming through the field a little bit. He started back in the 20th spot. He's moved his way into 15th, and he's currently staying ahead of Mike Rideout just by a little bit of an error or two. Mike does not a guy you can exactly just kick down that easily as we go on board here with Ledoux. Red level midnight motorsports right now represented well on the tundra of Ledoux and he's doing a great job in my opinion staying with his exposure staying in control of his destiny so many times you see guys running in that back of the pack or that mid pack and they'll struggle to kind of maintain grip maintain peace until they start to get a little bit later on into this race it's good to see that has not coincided or messed him up in that pursuit Kevin Baker also having a good little fight out here between him and Matthew Hoffert. Darnell just kind of laying low for a moment. Looks like the truck may be affected too much and the tires are hurting quite badly. Jeffrey Vickery going to pit road. Wally Babb and Bobby Anderson are both into pit road now. Everybody's setting their way down. Ooh, and it looks like Corey Reed about to hit that wall. About to hit those... Uh, tire barriers down there as well as the uh, sand pit. Con oh, just blazed it. You saw that rear end kick out underneath Con there. He just straight up sent it in there trying to get into pit real quick. Chris Bass going to try the same here. He's got to watch that pit road. He gets in and the throttle Chantel Pottle for the first time today she will lead the field in. I think what frankly just amazes me right now is the fact that we've had multiple leaders, we've had multiple lead changes, and this was all ran under green and ran under a pretty intense scenario as drivers head to pit road. To, to be honest with you guys, I'm quite impressed. This is very impressive. This is good stuff from these guys and gals. Now comes the ultimate question, when do you enter into pit road and when do you try to go for it? Bottle seems like she may be slowing down. Oh no, she's not slowing down, she's just getting harder on the throttle. Well, I can tell you right now, her fuel run, there is absolutely no way she will be able to last out and get into victory lane with the fuel run strategy. That's not going to work. I calculated the fuel up earlier on and you get about 40 laps of fuel in these trucks. She was in pit road on lap 31, so unless she has done some extremely hardcore saving and done some things I don't even know about, I highly, highly doubt she's going to be able to run a fuel run here. Matthew Hoffer going to go into pit road. Kevin Baker in pit road as well. Pottle and Oaks currently the only two still out. Victory and Con right now battling hard here in the 6th and 7th spot respectively. That will change to the 3rd, 4th, and 5th spot in a minute though as currently drivers are in pit road. We'll have to now endure the punishment here. Oaks will go into pit road. Oh, no, there's trouble on the front stretch. We got one spun around. Sean Long has spun it on the front stretch. There's no caution, though. Can he get it refired? Spun on his own there. You saw it just the bottom right screen of your corner here, and he was able to get it fired back up. There is no caution there. Continue to green. High racing officials right now extremely lax. I'll give them that, but I mean, how many more spins and all that are they going to see before maybe they get a little bit too eager to push that button, I wonder. 
Vickery and Kahn. Oh, Kahn gets Vickery on the inside. They're off turn two. Vickery gets bumped and run, and now Kahn able to escape from him. Bottle enters in Vet Road. She's now going to get a good strategy out because Khan's going to try to catch her here. And speaking of Khan, I don't know how much he's uh, annoyed Vickery down there, but I guarantee you one thing's for sure. Vickery's probably not a happy camper for that one. That's not something you do on these tracks and think you get away with it. But he's got to watch himself. He knows he can't overdo it. He's going to have to just try to catch him, and maybe then he can just make a quick pass on him. I don't know if Khan will try to be as defensive after that little hit he did, but it's going to be interesting to see. Chantel's going to get out of pit road. She's going to be close to the top 10 bracket. She's going to have to hope for the best, though, when it comes to battling out with, with Stahl, his song, and then trying to catch Bab with them up in the top five. Everything in complete chaos and madness here at Iowa Speedway. We've seen spins, we've seen flips, we've seen lead changes, we've seen three wides, we've seen two wides, we've seen multi lines. Is there anything we haven't seen tonight that I'm forgetting? Like, I might have to get a, I might have to really write a whole new rule book on this race and access. This is impressive. 19 laps left to go here. The field squandering away and driving throughout. Time running out though. Let's take a look at lap times right now here between the Rattlesnake and Vickery. And Vickery, you can see, only catching a little bit of him on lap 79. But ever since then, it's been cons to lose. Basto, not far behind. He's trying to catch both of them here and maybe have a chance at greatness and become one of only many drivers that have been able to go back to back on Pizza and Racing TV. It's an elite club that only the best can be intertwined in and be even able to be accepted in, and he knows it. He's got the time, but does he have the tire and the fuel to catch him? Vickery trying to hang on here. You can see he's got the 20 of Oaks, so has lap traffic, kind of a little bit of a set of saving grace, a little bit of a help and a workaround. Three truck battle here, though, for the 13th spot here. Right out going head to head with Darnell and Kevin Baker. Baker trying to watch himself and watch his tempo here as he continues to move the chains in. Looks like a slight little glimmer of problem there. Couldn't quite get the truck to turn in as well as he was hoping for. Oh, look at this now. Bass has caught Vickery, and it looks like Bass might be looking for a way around 15 laps left to go Oaks gives him the line to the bottom he knows his day is all but done Don is just simply just doing his thing doing his way this is what he's always been up to, what he knows how to do, and he's just performing at another level again today. The number 13, Hunter Hansen here, trying to stay with the 5 percentile bottle, but due to the lap tires and that fuel run as well that he and she have on difference, six laps making up that difference, I do not expect the 13 to get as much speed and power as the 5 can reel off with that fresh set of tires. Those Goodyears, when they are clean and set to go, that makes the biggest difference, and that's exactly what they're relying on, they're hoping for. Off a turn number four here, Corey Stahl right in the mix with Clinton Seymour here in the 18. Great battle here as Seymour drives a little too far up there. Lost traction and he ends up finding himself in old Rusty Bumps Lane down turn two. Song watching from behind, he sees opportunity, he sees a chance here. But again, these guys <laughs> are just tearing these but these tearing these coming up. Look at the pounce on the 18. <laughs> oh my word! The suspension right now is not only getting a workout, but it's going through leg day here. And I guarantee you, when he's done with this race, it's going to be sore than it gets. He's not going to be. He's going to be feeling all that here soon enough. Oh my word! 
11 laps will turn to 10 to go. Rattle, well, Rattlesnake currently in the lead by about a second and a half plus ahead of Vickery and Bass. Bass starting to fade. Oh, he's not just fading. He's got problems. Bass has got a huge problem. Straight in the front stretch. Caution is out. What has happened in the 97 of Chris Bass here? Something gone horribly wrong for the W Energy Machine. What is this? What happened there? Caution flying out at the worst possible time for Khan. And definitely not what he wanted to see here, but this is what happened in the 97. Take a look at this. Well, I'm not an expert or anything, but I don't know if that left, that right front locked on him or what happened, but we're going to the onboard camera. This will tell you guys all you need. Oh, right there. Look at that. He smacked the wall off three. Did the wheel lock. You see he's on the gas. Oh, it's not steering. Look at that. He is not able to steer it off. It looked like he had no control and no steering area there in that corner as it came in. And that cost him dearly. Now this is truly going to be a race out of pit road. Who's getting out of here first, I wonder? Oh, my word, folks. They're coming out now. Vickery will get them. Vickery's out first, Ledoux's second, Anderson's third, Khan's fourth, Henry is fifth. Oh, oh, oh my word. This could get interesting. This could get very, very interesting in a minute, folks. Oh, my goodness. Well... It has been a night full of chaos and a little bit of madness, but it certainly is getting a little bit crazier now, isn't it? Well, race fans, you see who is on your list. You see who is on your spot. Now I ask you, who is it going to be? Because this is boiling down to nearly a green-white checkered restart. Right now, Trent Henson, Dennis Warren, Sean Long, Kevin Baker, Jeff Oaks, Corey Reed, they're all lapped down. And they're not going to be able to get that chance to get back into this, unfortunately. Everybody else, though? They have a great chance here. Chris Bass having to go to the outhouse here, the back of the pack, due to an EOL there for causing the caution. He knows he has no choice. I think he's probably a little bit more annoyed about having to cause the caution in the first place, but at the same time, you race to race, and it, some of these things will happen. You just never know when it will. So without further ado... Off the distance in corner number four, we'll bring the pace car around one last time and turn those lights off around the track. The yellow flag will switch to a green as we are going to put the signal up for the one to go. Caution lights are down. Your field of driver is now set.
Troyan Hansen will get the lucky dog. Jeffrey Oaks will get a lucky dog. And that will be our two lucky dogs here. Will they have enough time to catch around the field, though? That's going to be a bigger question here. Race fans, we've got four to go coming on by. This could get interesting. Your top five on your screen. One of these drivers is going to walk away with the win. Who will it be? Could it be Victory? Will it be Anderson? Could it be Khan? Henry? Bav? Saw his song Paolo Seymour Darnell. We're about to find out as they come around off a of turn number four to the Lightning Raps Restart Zone. The green is out. Hey, down to the corner here. We'll bring him back off through turn number one, down in turn number two. Con with a big right, and again right into the seven. And Wally Bab wrecks right down to the bottom. Wally Bab in the 99 wrecking out completely. Robert Con getting right up in there, and I don't know if he caught the seven or what happened there, but my word. Made a huge run and a huge gain of position, and then everything went completely haywire from there. We'll take a look at Bab in a minute, but let's take a look at this one one more time. I think right about now, though, I think uh, there might be two uh, opening shots coming for Khan here from Vickery. He's got he's got a few of them from him today. Look at this. Vickery gets a good start. Khan gets in there and get blocked. Vickery tries to go down. Khan's going up a little. You can see Khan right there. That's the bump. That's where it got him. And it turned Bab. He had nowhere to go. Where was he going to go? But he lost control, unfortunately, in the turn. And that will end up now bringing us to our first of what could be three green-white checkered finishes here. Bab just losing in the corner there, unfortunately. Had nowhere to go. You know, race fans, I've talked a lot about racing. I've talked a lot about sometimes it's just part of racing. Sometimes it can be a bit crazier than you expect. But I don't think I've ever been a part of a race that has been this chaotic in a while. Oh, my word. Well, I think next time by, we're going to get this one in. Take a look at this again, your race fans. Take one last look at this one here. Take a close look right here as you see him coming right through turn number one. The 99 of Wally Bab again. This is the trouble he got himself into. Came off here, was trying to avoid the little carnage there, and you can see just barely a bunch of boys, the one of Bobby Anderson, but then got into that wreck and the tail whip and crashed out there. And the 99 had nowhere to go and had to get the EOL served at him for it. Nevertheless, the field will rise again and set themselves back up here.
So, chances looming, chances are brewing. Opportunities now ready to strike here as we are down with a green white checker scenario part one. Okay, race fans, remember coming up next, Shake and Bake Racing League return to the action and return to the show. We'll see them coming out here again, putting up a fight and putting on a battle. But nevertheless, the field has to regain composure, regain their their thoughts and feelings, and get this one settled up. Khan has been absolutely taking these drivers for a ride today, and he's been going for broke when he can. Now he finds himself in a very tight spot between him and Bobby Anderson. Will he be able to hold him back or be able to hold back the run from Henry or Vickery? There's some receipts that could be given here. We're not sure. We just know it's about to get wild again. Green back out. One more green, one checker coming your way. Entering hot to the turn. Here we go. Three wide salute. Everybody's gained for position. Everybody's spot for the run. A four wide for just a minute. No, oh, no. Trouble. Robert Issa crashes a huge wreck and suing there. We got to caution out again before they can get to the white. Well. Well, we got two more chances, but I think they want to continue a little more. I think they said this racing was just not enough, so they wanted more of it. That got a little bit wild, though, unfortunately. We'll take a look at Robert Hiss song here in the 28. We'll see what happened to him. Well, from that angle, it looked like Corey might have came into the corner a little bit hot there. We'll see what the officials decide, the judges decide. They're going to watch carefully though at his song on that outside and see if he was coming down or not. That's a tough call. They were three wide saloon in there. I think maybe they were thinking he's trying to hold his line in there. That may have to go to review. Well, two more chances. Attempt number two is coming up. Although you can really say they've had four chances now to get this one finished out. This is, it's been a while since we've had actually all of our green-white checkers used up. And I think these drivers are quite not too fond of uh, dealing with that. Usually they like to just race it from point A to point B and go green all the way. But sometimes you just kind of have one of these deals pop up and it's where it comes. Here we go. One more time around. We'll give the drivers a chance to get squared up. Looks like we're going to have 20 drivers on the lead lap. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. There it is. Lights turned off. We're sending these drivers in for another round.
coming through turn number four this time on by the second attempt going full on sin Tony West got saying Fado got to get that W we'll see if she can green flag back out it's all or do or die time for these drivers Oh, no, 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 not again. Not pile up in turn one. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? Well, looks like the reviewers are going to have quite a bit to review when this is all over with. But there is a green-white checker now up for opening here. Well, from that angle, it looked like Warrens came down on uh, the on the dew there. Looked like he had really nowhere to go in his mind, so he had to try to get for the speed and try to go for broke. Let's take another look at it. Let's see if the dude comes up at all here. I'd say right about now, Dennis Warrens is probably not too thrilled about this one. Damaged badly, he's out. He is done. He's saying the truck cannot go anymore, and it's done for, unfortunately. What a tough break there for him. Yeah, you know, sometimes that is just racing, folks. That is just racing. It comes in all forms and shapes and sizes. It comes, as a uh, Shrek once said, they have layers. Ogres have layers. Racing has layers. You see it. We all have layers, and racing is no exception. You can have the good layers, which is the fast quality, awesome times we had earlier. You can have the okay layers, like things are picking up, pace is starting to build, pit road coming out of pit road, the excitement starts to loop. You can have the bottom of the layer, which is the very end of the race antics that well, unfortunately these green white checkers are now affecting these guys on. And the aggression levels are skyrocketing so high up. I think we're past the stratosphere at this point here, boys. I think we're higher than the, than the uh, New York State Empire building right now. Just saying. But... We still got to finish it. We have one last chance. It doesn't matter if they mess this up. It's game over if they do. This is their last chance. Green, white, check on attempt. Three of three coming your way. One last chance to get this right or get this over with. That is their call. Can they keep the levels of speed and power at a, at a spent in a minimum? And can they get these things dialed in for one last big ride? Coming through turn number two this time on by. We'll set the field up and set them down in position. It is go time here for the Pedal of Metal Racing League Truck Series now on this grid. Top three will be interviewed after the race here. Coming off a of corner number four for the last time. One last time for the green white checkered attempt. We're out. Can they get to the white flag? On the outside, three wide. Chris Bass going for bro. Pottle to the bottom, trying to swing shot it through. Vickery is right below Khan. Here he goes for the run to the inside. Will he take it to Khan and put the aggression at a minimum? They'll put it on the white flag this time on by. We're still green. 
We're finishing this under green, but will there be enough time to get that rattlesnake bit? Vickery loses it. Anderson now taking over. They fight hard to try to get to him. As Crest Bass now moves his way back into the chase, he's going to fight hard for the final spot, but off a of corner number three and a turn number four. It's not enough time. Robert Kahn will bring it back to victory lane in the 21 Freightliner. He is your Lightning Rafts 100 winner tonight at the Iowa Speedway. What a finish. The official ruling will be put on display in a little while, but there it is. Your race winner, the Lightning Rafts 100 winner at Iowa Speedway today, the Rattlesnake. Robert Kahn revisits victory lane and takes one home for his Freightliner crew. And a who's who of drivers putting everything they had on the line to the end of this one. Nobody gave out. Nobody gave in. What a race. It's time to take a look at your PTM Racing TV results presented in part by the Pit Stall. Your finishers today come to you here in the 21 and Robert Kahn victory lane treat here again. He'll take it down one more time at Iowa Speedway. Jeffrey Vickery goes second out of the bunch with a great comeback to the end. The one of Bobby Anderson will go third. Henry in the three goes fourth. Bass will take home a nice fifth despite having a fight from the back. Chantel Pato, a solid top 10 again, going 6. 7 to Hunter Hansen in the 13 with a great run to the end. 18 for Clinton Seymour, good showing from him. The 84 of Matthew Hoffert put on a hellacious fight back. And Jordan Darnell will take the final spot in the top 10 in the number 15. Your final results and rest of your finishers on your screen and on display now, folks. What a race. What a night. What an awesome night of action. And now it's time to close it out with only the way we know how. Representing the number one Power Rangers Toyota Tundra today. And it's going to be Bobby Anderson bringing it home in third. And Bobby, you know, this was looking like a shootout to the end between you, Vickery, and Khan. Vickery goes for Khan there before the last lap comes up. And you saw an opening to take it from Vickery, but ran out of time in the end, right? Yeah, we just ran out of time. We thought we had a, thought we had a good run. Coming into turn one and two, maybe making him try to go up and block Vickery, but he held his line, did pretty good, and Vickery was able to get by, and we squeezed away with the top three. Be able to squeeze away with the top three. Now, I know uh, you're still looking for that first win of the season, that first win of your game here as well, but, I mean, this has definitely got to be boosting the confidence up entering into Sonoma two weeks from now, right? Oh, yes, sir, it does. Uh, we've been having a good run first three races of the season. Texas, we were doing pretty good, and we got mixed up in some things there, but it was all in all a good run for us until then. Um, we thought we had him on that last restart before we had this last one, the second restart, green white checker. We had the run on the inside, but it came out just as he was nosed in front of us. So, But he did good. Congrats to Mr. Khan for the win and for, got, for victory for coming in second. We had us a good run all, all, week, all night long, anyway. Anybody else want to thank for this one? I want to thank, uh, I got the sponsors, Pit, the uh, Pit Stall, and thank Fast, thank the league here, and I want to thank my wife and daughters and kids for watching this, and all the boys that are watching. We had fun up in here, and, well, we tried to bring it home, but couldn't get it there. Yeah, we had fun watching you see you try it, though, Anderson. Congratulations on a third place finish today, sir. All right, thank you. Bobby Anderson, ladies and gentlemen, will come away third. Your second front runner, though, in the seven. He'll finish runner up today. Jeffrey Vickery coming away in a solid second. And Vickery, congratulations on that. But, my friend, this one boiled down to one thing. Could you get back at Con for the times he got at you, my friend? Uh, I mean, we raced pretty clean all night. I, I did cut his nose off on one of the restarts. So I, I wasn't sure if that's why I got pushed up. But, um,. I mean, I don't know. I think it was just hard racing. Uh, no grudges or anything. 
Well, no grudges there. I'll give you credit for credits, too. I, I normally, a lot of guys would say otherwise, but you put up a pretty good performance and a hard run there from start to finish. So, I got to ask you, I mean, when the tires started to get torn up and really started to become harder to control, how big and important were those uh, green-white checker restarts for you to try to get around them? Uh, well, I was running, like, the middle line. I thought that was the best tire save. And, uh, yeah, the restarts, he had a pretty good jump on him. I thought that that last couple laps I could get underneath him, and it just it just wasn't happening. He was he was pretty good here. He put in the time in practice. So, um, yeah, I mean, those restarts would have been key. They certainly would have indeed. But, nevertheless, Vickery, I know this is a solid second place for you and the crew, and you got to be pretty proud of that performance. So who do you want to thank for this today? A big shout out to all the guys at Threat Level Midnight Motorsports, um, uh, BAR Racing, uh, The Distance, um, Fluff on the car tonight, Try with Peanut Butter, it's awesome, and, and Hot Chocolate, Cumberland Farms, 99 cent size coffees every day, and um, Four Juice Carpets and Lowell Mass. For sure there. All right, man, congratulations once again on a second place finish. Great to see you back in the forefront with these guys. Thanks, man. Have a good night. Ladies and gentlemen, your second place finisher today in the number seven, Jeffrey Vickery. And with that said, now, race fans, there's only one driver left to chat with here. Ladies and gentlemen, representing the Freightliner 21 Toyota Tundra, it is Robert Kahn, your victor today. Kahn, congratulations on this one. And uh, talk about this, too, man. You had to fight, scratch, claw, and burn it down with these other Tundras behind you just to get this one. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of fast people this year, and uh, it's not like it, it's hard to conserve tires because everyone's so quick. So, uh, earned that one. Had a really hustle there at the end, but a uh, good race, all in all. Yeah, with things getting a little bit wild too, you got kind of looked sound like you got cut off on the nose from what Vickery says. But I mean, from our end, it looked like you guys just had a little bit of a bump and run and tag in action here. I mean, what was going on down there with you guys? Well, I. I you watch me race over the years, and when, when I get a block, I don't let off for blocks. So I would, I went in, took that low line, and I don't know if I slid up and he came down a little bit. Certainly didn't mean to do him like that, but as far as the block, I, I, I just don't let off on those things, especially when it's towards the end of the race. So um, it's unfortunate me and him got together, but it, look, he had a good finish though too. He didn't get hurt too bad by it, so. Yes, sir. There. Well, nevertheless, you will take this one into victory lane again, showing the veteran instincts. Who do you want to thank for that? Uh, PTM, Butt Kicker, uh, Pit Stall, for sponsoring this year, um, everybody involved. Uh, appreciate you, and uh, appreciate everyone who puts the hard work in the league. For sure, there. Con, congratulations on another win here today. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, the Rattles think Robert Con will take this one to victory lane once again, and really just close out another hard day of racing race fans but nevertheless a very big thank you tonight to our friends at the pit stall the butt kicker company ford entertainment group pc.net and lightning rafts for all their support today and into, into the night with our lightning wraps 100 at iowa speedway race fans thank you thank you so much for coming on out tonight we hope you guys will join us here with Shake and Bake Racing League in just a few short minutes. But for now, we say thank you and God bless all. We'll see you soon.